Donna J. Donnan presents Ask Donna, a weekly podcast on a plethora of topics and tips. Donna's podcast is split into four distinct sub-podcasts. The first week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Bloggers podcast on such topics as overcoming bullies and bullying, tips on entrepreneurship, and protecting oneself from scams and scammers. The second week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Coach podcast. A bit of this, a bit of that from her monthly Did You Know Diary. The third week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Homemaker podcast. Tips on everyday hints to help you take advantage of natural remedies and solutions. And the fourth week of the month is where Donna's podcast is all about her product review and a book review. Sit back and enjoy. Hello, hello, hello and greetings everybody. My name is Donna J. John Hen. And I am your host for the Ask Donna Show. Before I get going, but maybe what I'll do is wait until the end of the show to tell you about my announcement. I forgot to do it last week. Sorry about that, everybody. Someone wrote to me asking me, where is the announcement? And oh boy, (laughs) I'm so very sorry. But I'll remember to tell you about my announcement at the end of the show. Okay, it's all about giving you the opportunity <clears throat> to tell us about tell us your listeners or your fellow listeners about yourself, about someone else, about anything that you wish to do. All right, um, <clears throat> and it can be promoted on either of my Ask Donna show or my Dining with Donna show. But I will tell you more about it at the end of the show. Meantime, thank you everyone for your continued support of my Ask Donna show. Um, For your suggestions, your comments, your uh, feedback, your thoughts, everything. And to my dear friend Victor Guvia for continuing to give me this opportunity to be with you. So we're on to the second week of September. Last week, I uh, produced my Ask the Blogger within my Ask Donna show. I gave you um, tips on bullying about um, when the kid beats his or hers, her cat or dog with a stick. It can be viewed very much as bullying. I gave you um, an entrepreneurial tip as to how to choose the best type of entrepreneurial of an entrepreneurial adventure base it on your finances your personal resources and your personal interests i talked to you about scams and scammers and i told you that you should ignore any email that comes to you telling you that you've been chosen either to receive a donation that you've won a lottery or that you've gotten a special gift. Just ignore it. And my thought for today last week, I talked about online banking, the fact that online banking has both advantages and disadvantages. Um, Advantages would include um, quicker and easier access for those with the appropriate internet connections and computer technology advantages for the bank as well but disadvantages for seniors and persons with disabilities because they may either not be technically savvy enough may not have the appropriate equipment or wi-fi connections and they did not grow up in the era of technology all right so that was last week's show and this week we are on to ask the coach okay And I have drawn a lot of my tips from a bit of this and a bit of that. It's from my Donna's monthly diary, okay? Um, And this is what I produce every month. Um, A bit of this and a bit of that from Donna's diary, okay? So, Let's get down to business here. 
here's what I learned for this month. First of all, let's talk about foil. When warming food, you can use foil. It's a very useful and time-saving tip. Wrap food in foil before putting it to warm in your toaster oven. Okay? Next, a tip on frying or scrambling eggs. First, put a small amount of oil and a gob of butter in your frying pan. Make sure that these are mixed together. Make sure that, you know, there are no lumps from the butter. Make sure that the butter is well mixed into the oil. Then turn the heat on high. When the oil and butter mixture start to, you know, swizzle or fizzle or not fizzle, start to swizzle or make a swishing sound, turn the heat down to low. Then pour in your egg mix. Okay, so you've got to make sure that the oil and butter are mixed in well together. Put the uh, frying pan on high, heat, put the heat on high, sorry, and then you pour in your egg mix and then turn it on low and that should do it for you. You can cook your eggs according to your choice of either scrambling or frying, okay? But make sure that that heat is turned on low after the mixture of the oil and butter start to, you know, make a sizzling sound. Okay? Here's what I learned this month about the honeybee. Mm -mm. Bees are very social insects, believe it or not. And they socialize when feeding together. I know, I know some of us are scared of bees, but I'm just telling you what I learned about them. They're very sociable little guys and they socialize when feeding together. They feed their queen because she cannot feed themselves. Okay? So they cannot you know, they can't, no, sorry, they feed their queen because she can't for some reason feed themselves, feed herself. And they feed their drones and they feed their young. And they always seem to feed, they always seem ready to feed another bee, even if the bee is not from their colony. Okay? So that's what the bees are all about. They socialize together when they are feeding. They feed their drones and their young ones. They feed their queen because she can't help herself, believe it or not. And uh, they are often referred to as busy. That's why they're busy as a bee. Okay? To produce one tablespoon of honey for our toast, um, the, sorry, in order to produce one tablespoon, one tablespoon of honey for your toast, the little bee makes about 4,200 trips to flowers. In order to gather the necessary pollen for the honey, okay, he makes about 10 trips a day to the fields, all right? So he may, he's very busy gathering the nectar, not the pollen, the nectar from the flowers, 10 trips a day, right? And for one, one, you know, one pound of clover honey, the bee has to make many, many trips 
in order to get this done. Yeah. The bee must visit about 56,000 clover heads. Can you believe that? 56,000 clover heads in order to make one pound of clover honey. I can't believe it. Okay. Bees never sleep. And throughout this entire process, if you want to sort of get an idea of how many trips this poor little bee makes, he circles, it's the equivalent of circulate, circu, circling the world for about three times. This poor little bee circling the world for about three times in order to do all of this. And he never sleeps. Okay? This little wonder is responsible for over 80% okay, of insect pollination. Okay, and the impact on our food goes way beyond honey. Okay. <sighs> if the little bee didn't do its job, it would significantly affect it would decrease the yield of fruits and vegetables, okay? If the little bee didn't do its job, it would significantly decrease the yield of fruits and vegetables. Ooh. Okay, much ado about our little bee and enough about our little bee for this month. How about some tips on using flour? If you store flour in your fridge, best to use it as, as follows. Rem if you want to use the flour, take it out of your fridge. Let stand for a half hour before using it. Do not use the flour while, while it is still cold. Best to use it at room temperature. How about some suggestions to deal with an upset stomach? In a glass of warm water, add a few drops of Angostura bitters. And you can find this Angostura bitters in any supermarket. So in a glass of warm water, add a few drops of these bitters. Drink slowly. Or you can also try digesting a piece of candy ginger. I find this really helps and I've used both the warm water with the bitters and the candy ginger piece. And I have two other suggestions for you. Glass of ginger ale or a glass of coke but make sure that the coke is flat. How about a cup of hot lemon tea? Or a cup of hot ginger tea? Okay. Here is something interesting about Granny Smith apples and I guess we're now approaching apple picking season. They are the best for baking because they are firm and have a tart flavor. This is Granny Smith apples. Okay. About apple juice, good to drink when you have a cold. Either warm or cool would do the trick for you. If you're having problems removing rings or bangles from fingers or wrists, here's what you do. Dampen your fingers or your hands then you larder with soap or uh, hand lotion and then you slowly slide the ring or the bangle off of your finger 
or your hand or your wrist. Okay. Just apply a healthy um, lot of hand cream or hand lotion or hand soap. That would do the trick for you. It'll definitely come off with consummate ease and I'm giving you this tip because I have used it many, many times. Right, so this, these tips have all come from my diary, my monthly diary. A bit of this and a bit of that, that from Donna's diary. And now I'm going to give you some questions, that, well, questions that I, I chose from my pool of questions that people submit to me every month. I randomly chose this. And here are the, there are three questions that I chose for you, okay? Right. The first question was asked about how to keep earbuds untangled. I found this purely by accident. What I do is that I stretch my earbuds over the backs of chairs, making sure that the ends, one end is um, going down the back of the chair, the outer back of the chair and the other one is going down the inner back of the chair. Or you just use it that way, stretch it, you know, from the inside of the chair, inside of the back of the chair, across the top and down the back, the outer back of the chair. Keep it that way and your earbuds will always be untangled, okay? Dealing with wet floors. The best way to deal with wet floors is first determine that the floor is indeed wet. And how do you do this? Well, sometimes it's very difficult if there are no signs that you can see. All right. So if for some reason you find that the floor is wet, go gently, go slowly or wait for the floor to be dried. Wet floors are one of the most difficult things to detect and also it causes people to fall quite often okay cleaning wet paint from your clothes i think the best thing to do is to find a paint remover keep it on hand at home and whenever wet paint gets onto your clothes use this because you know what you can damage your clothes by trying to scrub the wet paint from it with removers or soap or anything like that. It doesn't do very well. Best to get a paint remover, a good paint remover that would help you. Okay? Right. Let's go now to the mental stretch for this week. And like I said, our mental stretch is based on the use of the MIC principle. Clearing your minds and imaginations of clutter and cobweb and to spark and stimulate your creative juices. Use the mental stretch at any time of the day for any length of time. Use it whenever you need to recharge, regurgitate, refresh, you know, do anything like that, or you're just looking for ways to, you know, motivate yourself. All right? It is based on the use of one of any of five smells, hearing, um, the sense of hearing, the sense of smell, uh, sense of touch, sense of taste, or sense of sight. So you're f either or any of your five senses. All right. For this week, we're going to concentrate on the using the sense of smell. Okay, sense of smell. Okay, how about smelling a cup of hot chocolate? Yes, you can taste it as well. But for this week, we're going to smell it. Mm, mm, mm. Tickles your nostrils, doesn't it? sense of smell, smelling a cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, I like that. And use your sense of taste to bolster your, your uh, imagination and your mind, okay? How about bacon frying? This, again, you can use both the sense of smell 
and the sense of taste to help you out for this week. Sense of smell, the bacon fry, my God, you can smell it, whoa! You can taste it when it's done, and you can also hear it as it crackles in your pan, okay? How about logs burning? And for this suggestion, you can smell the logs burning, and you can also see the logs burning, okay? Great way to clear your mind and your imagination of cobwebs and clutter and to start sparking and stimulating your creative juices. Nothing better than to smell logs burning, especially as fall approaches. Okay? Right then, I'm going to end my show with my virtue bento basket. But before I do this, I'm again going to remind you that you can send me your email with your thoughts, your suggestions, your comments, your feedback to ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. So now for my virtual bento basket. How about family night? And you know, with fall and winter, you know, breathing down our throats or starting to breathe down our throats, here is what I'm thinking for family night. Nothing unusual. Let's fill the bento basket with some snacks. We got Pringles, cheesies, chips, okay? Maybe some cookies. How about that? Yeah. So you have a bit of sweet and a bit of savory. What kind of cookies? Well, chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies would do the trick. And how about some drinks? Some, again, some hot lemon tea, spicy tea. Fill the thermoses with your teas, any kind of tea. Or maybe some coffee would do the trick or even hot chocolate would do the trick. Okay? That is my Binto basket for this week. And to end my show, I'm going to tell you, or remember to tell you, <clears throat> that if you wish to share anything about yourself, about anyone else, about anything, for the very affordable price of $5 a month, you can send your email to us at askdonnaonblindlife at gmail.com. We will review your email, your submission, and if it is accepted, no more than 150 words, no foul language, no criticisms, we will be pleased to announce it on any of our two shows, monthly shows, Dining with Donna or Ask Donna. You will also need to tell us which or how you wish us to present it or announce it, either on two Ask Donna shows or two Dining with Donna shows or one each of Ask Donna or Dining with Donna, okay? For the very affordable price of $5, when we accept your submission, you can. we will let you know. Send your payment to paypal, P-A-Y-P-A-L, at donnajodhen.com. That's paypal at donnajodhen.com. And upon receipt of your payments, we will acknowledge it and we will tell you when we would be announcing your submissions. Easy, isn't it? $5 a month and you get two opportunities to have your submission announced on our shows. Please take advantage of this, okay? That's it for me for this week, folks. Thank you very, very much for tuning in to listen to me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Victor. Have a great rest of the day, a great rest of the week, and continue to enjoy yourselves. Take care now and have lots of fun. Bye-bye. That's it for this week. Donna hopes that you enjoyed her podcast today. She thanks you for having taken the time to tune in and looks forward to being with you next week. Send your thoughts and feedback to Donna at askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com.